Hi everyone, this is Joanna. Welcome to my channel. You guys, last week I was playing with the Cernet Translucent uh, Sapphire Clay, among other colors, but the sapphire was coming out so beautifully, I fell in love with it. And I wanted to do some crackle effect already last week, but it didn't really work out for me, so this is my um, second take on it, and I hope you guys will like it because the colors really came out absolutely beautiful. So let's get started. So for the bottom, I am using translucent, but it's Sculpey a Primo translucent clay, and I'm adding some uh, silver leaf to the top. Now you don't want the clay to be too thin because in order to get the crackle effect, we are going to have to roll it out eventually, and we you know it needs to have some give and i'm using the sapphire cernet translucent as well now i roll out that translucent cernet on the thinnest setting of the machine i'm just placing it on my leaf in hopes that you will be able to create some crackle that is going to pop through the the blue now like i said you need to make sure that it is it has some give that clay because we're going to run it through a pasta machine at first at two and three and four and this is what i actually got on number four of the pasta machine it's like this really nice crackle although it doesn't look translucent yet now this stamp is absolutely uh, awesome it's from simon says stamp i'm going to list the uh, i think it's fabulous flora maybe <laughs> and I'm going to do mica shift with pearl okay so I rolled out some pearl clay and I'm placing it inside the stamp you know you have to get a nice really uh, indentation in order to do mica shift I love mica shift I have so many videos with mica shift you guys should check them out so at this point we're just going to go in and just shave off everything that is sticking out and I have to tell you that this is not my finest mica shift job I think I was just rushing it a little bit I mean I still have some movement in the clay at the uh, as an, an end result but I probably could have taken a little bit more time so basically just going to shave everything off and then you take a, p a piece of paper and you run it through to make it smooth you really cannot see it in the video but there is the movement in the clay and uh, it looks really really beautiful so here you have it you have the two pieces that I'm going to be working with I am sure that there are different ways of work of uh, creating what I'm going to create but what I did the mica shift piece I flipped it upside down so the mica shift part is actually at the bottom and now I'm placing the blue on top okay so and then I'm like okay I'm gonna start cutting and I'm like well hold on a second you know what I really don't see where the <laughs> the pearl is so maybe it would be a good idea to like flip it around and maybe do it the other way around so anyways so mica shift is actually facing me right now okay so I'm just adding this funky cut. It's not even a funky cut. It's just the swirly cut to it. Uh, and I'm going to take my um, teardrop cutter and I'm going to give it one more cut. I don't want those clays to be stuck together because I'm actually going to pull them apart. So try not to like squish them. Okay. So now I'm going to be using two of the same part. You see those? And you're gonna pull them apart and there you have those are that's so I'm just gonna use the one side all right um, there is there is reason for my madness you will see it's going to come out really nice and now you just can go ahead and fix the edges you know because I mean it really it's so warm here still that the clay was sticking more than I really wanted it to be uh, but maybe if you put in the freezer before you add the two layers together, maybe that would actually work. So there you have it, my two pieces. And now I'm going to put them on the side. And I'm going to uh, uh, bake them uh, with all the rest. And of course, at this point, I'm just going to go and go crazy with my pendants and use all the leftover clay, add uh, little designs to it. And everything is, it was really coming out so beautifully. <laughs> but my very favorite pendant, it is just so funny, is the one that was made with just scraps 
and I absolutely love it and I can't even tell you how it came to life I'm glad I have the video of it <laughs> because I was like how did I do it <laughs> when I was when I was looking at it the other day I'm like oh my gosh how, how did it come to life so I'm glad I have the video because when I work sometimes I just don't pay attention how I put things together and this one really came out super beautiful well this one definitely is going to be one of the kind because I will never be able to duplicate it for sure but this is how that one comes out I rolled out some clay I placed uh, all the scraps on top and now I'm just uh, going to cut it freehand which I really love doing that but it's funny I love it but I'm always going to the same kind of shape, isn't that funny? I guess I just feel comfortable with it, but there you have it. That one is going to be ready to go in the oven together with all the other pendant. Okay, so here they are, baked and with the resin on. Look at that, the crackle is amazing. And look at my beautiful one, I love it. I get such a tickle every time I look at it. <laughs> I mean, it's just so pretty. I mean, you have the, the silver leaf and even these, I mean, I guess I was cutting way more than <laughs> I really needed to. But okay, so let's go back to these guys. So I already put resin on them and now I'm going to put them together. So I'm using the E6000 glue to put them together and I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the top, a little bit of glue to the bottom. E6000 is fantastic if you guys, it should be in everybody's craft room. So now I'm kind of going to put them together. I want them hold, um, hold each other kind of but I really want that little hole still showing in the middle so I just had to kind of uh, figure out how to lift the blue piece finally the cardboard really worked because I wanted to make sure that the blue piece was in line with the white one and uh, there you have it I just let it dry put a piece of paper on top and then I put a heavy coaster on uh, on top of that and I let it dry I have to say that E6000 worked absolutely beautifully on it. It is so sturdy, but there you have it. There's the shape that I was looking uh, looking for. And it's really nice because you have that little step up, you know, between the blue and the pearl. So now I'm taking another glue and I'm just adding little dots of glue on my blue. And then I'm placing pearls. I'm with the first few pearls a little bit bigger and then I'm going to smaller ones. I really love using different shapes and uh, not shapes, sizes of pearls and one design it really makes such a huge difference you see that the top ones are a little bit smaller than the bottom ones and yes I definitely need a new rhinestone picker this one has seen better days and I probably may have to get another one but there you have it it is all done and dry and it looks so so pretty I absolutely love the way this one came out the colors are just absolutely amazing the crackle is so glorious i am so in love with this pendant so what do you guys think i i think it was it came out pretty pretty nice the mica shift i'm not saying this is my <laughs> best mica shift job but oh my gosh this one here i am in love with it there's so much going on i hope you guys like it just as much as i do with that being said my friends till next time hope you guys are having an amazing day Ta-da!